Op Op Garage Racer. Today we continue the section on engines. Today we have the B58 engine on our test. This is the next engine after the N55. Today we will tell you about the innovative solutions that were applied in it compared to the N55. Y can handle around 700-800 horsepower in stock. Additionally, it is utilized in the Toyota Supra, a vehicle that has been modified to achieve close to 1000 horsepower with this same engine. In tuning communities, it is regarded almost as highly as the 2JZ even after 20 years. Up Up Garage Racer. We continue the section on engines. Today we are reviewing the latest six-cylinder BMW engine, which continues the series of legendary six-cylinder inline turbo engines, the successor to the N55 engine, also a three-liter with a turbo. This engine is called the B58, and it is installed in BMWs produced in the last five years, such as the 340i, 440i, 540i, and 740i BMWs. The B58 was also recognized as the best engine of 2017. Today we will tell you about the innovative solutions that were applied in it compared to the N55, why it can handle 600-800 horsepower in stock. It is also installed in the Toyota Supra, which has been tuned to around 1000 horsepower with this engine and is considered in tuning circles almost like the 2JZ after 20 years. Let's start the review of our B58 engine. Here it is, a real beauty. The main disadvantage of this engine is that it has no disadvantages. If we approach this seriously, these engines are installed in BMWs from the last five years. They haven't yet accumulated 150,000 or 200,000 kilometers on a large scale, and there is no accumulated statistics either with us or online about their common issues. Therefore, it's not possible to discuss each system and common problems as we did in previous videos, because there is no reliable data on what might fail or not. In the format of previous reviews, it's not feasible to make a video due to the lack of reliable information. So we decided to do this review in the format of a comparison with its predecessor, the legendary or super popular N55 engine, using the BMW F30 335i as an example. So, following the pattern of our previous videos, let's start with the review of this engine's internals. One of the main features of the B58 engine is the block. It uses a closed deck block, just like the old M52, M54 and M50 engines. The N55 uses an open deck block. The closed deck block in the B58 allows it to be more robust and rigid, which helps it handle and sustain higher torque and power when tuned. For example, in America, with modifications to the connecting rods and pistons, and keeping the same crankshaft, they have extracted around 1000 horsepower on an engine dyno. It is currently uncertain how long the combat mode will endure, but it is still a considerable duration. Conversely, the closed deck block restricts the flow of coolant, consequently hindering the engine's ability to dissipate heat. Nonetheless, this issue is less critical for this particular engine, as BMW has introduced a new temperature control system. We will delve into further detail on this when we discuss the cooling system the N55 can't boast such figures. In stock form, it can safely handle approximately 500 or 550 horsepower, and with some stage three modifications, it can support around 600 horsepower. Therefore, it has not yet achieved figures reaching 1000 horsepower. We will now proceed with the discussion of the hardware. It has a forged crankshaft, and the stock connecting rods and pistons can handle around 700, 800 horsepower. There are many tuned projects in the US on sport fuel, which can comfortably hold 700 wheel horsepower, which is about 800 engine horsepower. It's also worth mentioning the B58 engine block. The cylinder walls have a special coating from BMW. Hello Alusil and Nikasil. The N55 had liners. While this has some sort of coating, the composition is not particularly known and time will tell how it performs. So far, nothing is known and everything seems fine. As we enter the year 2020, these engines are at most five years old, which makes me believe that the coating issue is not a major concern. 
Even if there were any problems, a new engine like this one with only 10,000 kilometers on it and being a year and a half old is highly unlikely to encounter any troubles. Regarding liners or cylinder coatings, old BMW engines had liners, then came Nikasil with Alusil. These were poor coatings on the N52 engines. Subsequently, liners were reintroduced with the N55, which is actually advantageous as it reduces the chance of scoring, damage, or the coating wearing off. They decided to use a super new fancy coating for the cylinders instead of liners in this engine. It's supposed to be much stronger. Continuing with the engine hardware, there is a slight downside from a maintenance perspective. The timing chains are located at the back, just like in the N47 and N57 diesels. So here in the B58, they are at the rear, near the driver. This will complicate chain replacement and maintenance in the future, but there's a nuance. It's unknown whether they stretch or not. On the M50 and M52, 20 years ago, no one changed them until after 400,000 kilometers. Everything was fine. So there are no real cases yet with 200,000 kilometers to say whether they stretch or not. Therefore, it's too early to worry about this now. Subscribe to our channel for more content. In approximately a decade, we will release a video focused on timing chains. In this video, we'll delve deeper into the subject and provide expert analysis. It's worth mentioning that the rear chain design may present challenges if, after about 150,000 kilometers, one of the Vainos actuators on the intake or exhaust fails. It will also be challenging to service and access from the rear. The Valvetronic here is probably of the fourth generation, as it is different from the one in the N55. The motor itself is now located outside, not inside the block in the cylinder head, where you have to remove the valve cover. Consequently, replacing the electric motor in this configuration will be a simpler task. Similar to the N55, the B58 does not possess a low operating temperature, so it's advisable to anticipate oil leaks originating from both the valve cover gasket and oil pan once the odometer reaches the range of 100,000 to 150,000 kilometers. That's what we think, but we'll post an Instagram story if there's a real case. By the way, we have an Instagram where we post stories daily with all sorts of trash and non-trash about BMW repairs that come in every day. So subscribe and follow us, it will be interesting. We've finished with the engine hardware, let's move on to the engine accessories. Let's begin with the fuel system, which is quite similar for the B58 engine as compared to the N55. It also has direct injection, a low pressure pump in the tank, and a high pressure pump. However, there's an interesting difference compared to the N55. In the N55, the high pressure pump feeds fuel into the fuel rail, like in diesels, and from the rail, it goes to the injectors. In the B58, there's an interesting solution. The high pressure pump feeds directly into the rail with the injectors inserted directly into the rail. The rail is placed above the injectors. This design aims to provide better fuel pressure control directly at the injector without additional intermediate lines. Additionally, the B58 has two fuel rails. One rail is divided into two parts with two lines from the high pressure pump feeding into it. Continuing with the fuel system, the injectors. In the N55, they were relatively reliable compared to the N54 and rarely failed. We usually don't replace them for customers. There haven't been any issues reported with the B58 injectors yet, so time will tell how they perform. Follow us and we'll update you in 10 years. Regarding the ignition system, the B58 uses similar coils as the N55, directly on the spark plugs. The N55 ignition system was reliable up to over 200,000 kilometers. As for the B58, it's too early to tell, but we think it will be just as reliable. By the way, there's an interesting point about this particular B58 engine. It's running a wild stage with over 600 horsepower, possibly the only one in Ukraine. The N55 couldn't handle that much power at all. We'll see how this engine with its closed deck block handles that power. So subscribe to our Instagram and YouTube. This car will appear there often. It will be interesting for everyone, including us, to see how it handles the power and how reliable this configuration will be. So let's talk about the air intake system. The B58 stands out significantly compared to the N55. The N55 uses a classic air intake setup. The turbo feeds air into the intercooler through pipes, then from the intercooler to the intake, cooling the air in an air-to-air -air intercooler. A revolutionary technology has been implemented, where instead of the turbo feeding air through an intercooler, it is directly passed through pipes. By the way, this is a tuned pipe because of the stage tuning, but we'll talk about that later. 
This is an injection of water methanol, but that's not what it's about either. The air then enters the intake manifold, which is equipped with a liquid cooling system. This intake manifold incorporates a built-in liquid intercooler along with a radiator that contains antifreeze, positioned directly on the intake manifold. It will be interesting to see how this setup holds up over the years. For example, what will happen if the radiator leaks at 200,000 kilometers and antifreeze leaks into the intake? We'll see how BMW has protected against this. That's the intake system. Here's the fun part. The advantage of this setup is that it allows for more efficient heat dissipation from the air. Antifreeze circulates through the radiator. The second, and I think the most important aspect, is that in turbocharged engines, the problem is usually the long path from the turbo to the throttle body and the intake. In this case, the intake track is reduced, resulting in a more immediate response from the throttle, faster delivery of power, and improved control. The system's intake tract contains a smaller amount of free air. When the boost starts, it has less volume to compress, making it more compact and allowing it to enter the intake faster. This is the main advantage of this intake system. Regarding the air intake system from the filter, it's similar here. From the filter, it goes to the turbo. The turbo in both engines is a twin scroll turbo. In the B58, its performance increased by 20%, allowing more power to be extracted from the turbo right from the start compared to the N55. Additionally, the N55 used a vacuum-operated turbo control with a regulator until 2013, after which it switched to an electronic wastegate. The B58 exclusively uses an electronic wastegate, meaning a servo drive operates the wastegate on the turbo. Using an electronic wastegate in the turbo eliminates the problems associated with vacuum-controlled boost. Vacuum-controlled systems have several disadvantages, such as vacuum hoses deteriorating over time, regulators getting clogged and malfunctioning, and weakening vacuum supply. With an electronic wastegate, there's no need for vacuum hoses or regulators, it regulates itself. This system reduces the number of components involved in boost control, thereby simplifying the system. However, in the future, it might require replacing the entire regulator assembly, Specifically, this particular example has a tuned, non-standard turbo. It spools up later, meaning there's noticeable turbo lag, but it has the potential for 800 horsepower. So if the bottom end is strengthened as a precaution, it can potentially produce around 800 horsepower. Regarding the tuned turbo and lag, in the stock N55, there's no lag at all. You press the pedal and it immediately responds. Here, you press the pedal and after 3000 revolutions per minute, you can feel when the turbo spools up and then it kicks in hard. On my turbo project car, you press the pedal, wait, 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 and then when it finally kicks in, it starts to slip. Now let's move on to discussing air intake systems with the focus on the Valvetronic system. In contrast to the N55, where the Valvetronic motor is situated inside the cylinder head and requires the valve cover to be removed for access, this is a third generation Valvetronic system. Here we probably can call it the fourth generation. The Valvetronic shaft is located at the end of the cylinder head and the Valvetronic motor itself is right here. So replacing it is not difficult at all. You don't need to remove the valve cover, etc. This means it will be easier to service this engine for Valvetronic issues in the future if such problems arise. The crankcase gas regulation system also affects the air intake system. Here, as in the N55, there is a valve cover with a membrane. So far, there have been no cases of failure, but I think this will not be an exception and will break down after about 100,000 kilometers. Moving on to the cooling system. Here, just like in the N55, there is a coolant radiator, but an intercooler and air conditioning radiator have also been added. The sandwich has grown even larger. Therefore, it is recommended to wash the radiators every two years, just like on any BMW, to avoid overheating. Interesting features and differences from the N55 can be found in this version. In the N55, an electric water pump was used, which had a price range of $300 to $500. However, in this engine, a mechanical pump is used instead. But don't simplify it just yet, because there's more to it. This engine utilizes a thermal management system with a mechanical pump and an advanced thermostat. This sophisticated thermostat is capable of maintaining optimum heat levels for a long duration, and can cool down when required. 
The placement of the thermostat underneath the intake manifold may pose a slight challenge when replacing it, but the actual construction is budget friendly. I checked the cost of the original B58 thermostat is just over $100, making it reasonably priced. Moreover, the mechanical pump is also much more economical compared to the electric one used in the N55, and it has a lower risk of sudden failure. In this particular setup, there are two additional radiators to accommodate the 240i engine. These radiators are positioned in the front bumper diffusers on the left and right sides. The reason for these additional radiators is the high amount of heat dissipation required by the engine. With these radiators, the engine can be driven hard for extended periods without the risk of overheating. Furthermore, due to the presence of a liquid-cooled intercooler integrated into the intake system, there are two separate cooling circuits in place. Consequently, two reservoirs and two caps are utilized, which means that potential issues with caps or reservoirs in the future could be doubled. The chances of having issues with the intercooler cooling system are quite low, but it's possible for the regular system to encounter problems. However, this particular issue is not common in older BMWs. As for the cooling of the turbo, since it is reliant on a mechanical pump and there's no capability of circulating coolant electrically after the engine is turned off, it cannot be cooled down. There's an additional electric pump that circulates water through the turbo, so you don't have to worry about oil coking in the turbo or localized overheating when you stop the engine after active driving. The intercooler cooling circuit also requires coolant circulation, which is handled by a small electric pump. If this pump fails, the engine won't overheat, but the car's performance will be affected, though not as critically as with the N55 if its electric pump fails. Regarding the engine accessories like the alternator or the air conditioning compressor, they are probably similar to those on previous engines. They work well and last a long time. There is a tensioner pulley that should be replaced along with the belt every 100,000 kilometers. This engine also has an electric water pump with no hydraulic power steering, so there's nothing noteworthy here. The B58 is better than the N55 in almost every aspect, except for the addition of some nuances in terms of liquid-cooled intercooling. How this will perform in 10 or 15 years, if it will corrode, or if coolant will start leaking, remains to be seen. But this is something we'll find out in about 5 to 10 years. Right now, it doesn't affect the purchase decision or cause any concerns. Additionally, servicing the timing chain and Venos from the driver's side might require engine removal, which future owners will face in about 5 to 10 years, if at all, as there is currently no information on timing chain issues. Overall, the B58 has mostly advantages, and the N55 falls short in nearly all aspects. However, the N55 is more common due to being on the market longer, starting from 2010, while the B58 began production in 2015 and became widespread in 2016. Finally, BMW has released a gem, a real hope for brand fans, and specifically for me, because I used to be a huge fan of the previous N54, which had a potential of 550 horsepower that you could easily achieve without doing anything major. But that setup was less reliable and very risky. Now BMW has released the B58 from which you can get 600, 700, 800 horsepower in stock form without touching the internals and that's just pure bliss. Uh, the B58 is very interesting to us because it's a very promising engine from BMW. Uh, we'll also make a video showing how this car can be tuned and how it's currently tuned to outperform all stock BMWs being released right now. We'll also make a video about the cost of shipping this car from the USA and its future maintenance. If you're interested, subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow us on Instagram, and we're off to get things done.